A lot of you commented on my air purifier video that I should have done a control to see how fast the dust settles on its own. So let's do that. I start it with the usual three drops of mineral oil on the hot plate. And I'll spread that around the room with the fan. All right, I'm getting uh, fairly even dust levels now, so I'm gonna leave the room, but I'll leave the fan running, but I have it plugged into a smart plug so I can turn it off later without changing anything in the room. And here's my particle counts over time for the various sizes. Now the counts for the larger ones are much smaller, so I'm gonna apply a scale factor to the smaller ones. And that brings them up so I can see them better. And I had the fan on here, turn the fan off here and turn it back on again. And you can't really see very much of a difference, though I created sort of a model of how those particles decay. And that gives me a half-life for the dust without the fan of 5.8 hours and with the fan 3.8 hours, but that's all rather hand-waving. And then in the end, I turned on the Drio to clear off the dust and that had a half-life of just 4.8 minutes, so way, way faster than the natural decay. Now let's repeat that experiment using wood smoke as airborne particulate. And here's the results with the wood smoke. I had the fan on here, fan off, and then fan on again. So the fan made a big difference. The other thing that's interesting is the lines for the coarser particles are way down. So yellow is one micron, uh, cyan is two and a half micron, and then this is five and 10 micron. I'm using the same multipliers that I used before, which brought those pretty close to each other. But now the one and larger microns are way, way down, which is to say this mixture of smoke is a much smaller particles. The uh, 0.3 and 0.5 micron lines are pretty close together still, but that's because the uh, 0.3 micron line, as far as I'm concerned, is actually just sort of an extrapolation of the half micron. It doesn't really go that fine. The white line is an exponential decay model uh, for fan on and then a different time constant for fan off and fan on again. And the half-life for the dust with the fan off is 9.6 hours, quite long. But with the fan on, it's 1.9 hours. And that is actually shorter than it was with the fan on for the coarser smoke from the oil. So the wood smoke's natural decay with the fan off is much longer, but with the fan on, it's actually shorter. Very interesting. And I actually left this running overnight, so uh, this is showing the full graph. And the exponential decay continues right down to just about nothing. So just running a fan in the room somehow clears that smoke five times faster than it would on its own though not nearly as fast as using an air purifier. If churning the air with a fan makes a difference, I thought, how about churning those in my dust collector with the filters removed? After that, I tried my homemade air cleaner with uh, three cheap furnace filters. And after that, this high-speed blower, which runs quite fast and loud, so it might do quite a bit of churning. And here's the graph from that. Uh, this is with a cyclone but no filters running. This is with three cheap furnace filters and this is the small high-speed blower. And the half-life I got for the cyclone is uh, 0.7 hours, then 1.9 with the furnace filters, same as just a fan, and the high-speed blower is 1.2 hours. Now cyclones typically aren't very effective at removing particles that are just a few microns in size. So my theory is that with all the churning that's happening in the cyclone and the blower, that maybe the smoke particles stick together and become bigger particles and then settle out. Certainly they didn't seem to want to stick to my cheap furnace filters, so it's a bit of a mystery to me. Now so far I hadn't tested it with actual wood dust, so I did some sanding to make some, but I had a hard time getting enough dust into the air. With all my messing around with wood dust, uh, these particle sensors are just not picking up that sort of coarse dust very much. So I'm just getting very small readings. Maybe this will do the trick. Ah, oh, gross. <laughs> I have lots of visible dust on my keyboard here now, but the readings are still relatively small. This plot is the particles from my dust collector filter, and the line in blue actually here is from the ZPH02 sensor. The ZPH02 sensor is this thing here. It's got no fan, no moving parts, and is relatively cheap but it seems to respond well to rather large particles. Also, the vertical scale on here is different from my previous plots, 
because I just couldn't get as many particles into the air as I could with the oil or the smoke. And the white line here, that is kind of a curve fit to the K and that worked out to a half-life of 31 minutes. That's with the fan running and the dust from the uh, dust collector filter. Now I repeated that same experiment, um, this time without a fan running and the decay is much slower and the white line that I fitted worked out to a dust half-life of one hour and one minute. I know it's not really that accurate but uh, that's what it came to when I fitted that curve to it and looking at it on a logarithmic graph you can see that slope, the slope for the finer particles is a little bit slower so those decayed a bit slower than that. But it appears that with this experiment, particle counts decreased about twice as fast with the fan running than without. Then I knocked some more dust out of my dust collector filter and ran it overnight, letting it decrease way down. This is much more visible on a log graph. And I have some lines that I fit it to the coarse particles, the ones from the ZPHO2, and the finer particles from my plant tower dust sensor. And the half-life for those, in this case, was 2 hours and 44 minutes and 3 hours and 50 minutes. I don't know why the dust half-lives without the fan were that much longer than my previous experiment without the fan. I suspect as I was knocking out that uh, dust collector filter more and more, that I was just getting different kinds of particles the more I knocked it. Something like that. This is why making the airborne particulate every time, like putting oil on the hot plate or burning a little bit of wood, is very useful because it makes for a much more consistent experiment. Then trying another experiment, this time purely woodworking dust, uh, first with my bandsaw and the cover open, but that just didn't get very many particles into the air. Then I used a little belt sander and sanded it for quite a while, and at least that got some particles into the air, but a much lower concentration than I got previously. And looking at the graphs from that, the uh, blue line is from my ZPHO2 sensor, which responds to larger particles, and those decayed faster than this one, this green line, which is the 10 micron reading for my plant tower sensor. So a different rate of decay for those. Especially looking at the log graph, you can see that kind of fits the curve here and that fits this curve here. The uh, ZPHO2 sensor at some point just kind of stops giving readings, so it doesn't go to very low concentrations though. And then making dust with a belt sander again, and this time with the fan running, the decay was a fair bit faster and I worked out the half-lives for that. Um, so for the larger ones detected by the ZPHO2, I had 26 minutes and for the 10 micron particles from the plant tower sensor, I had 43 minutes. Whereas without the fan running, those half-lives were 34 minutes and an hour and nine minutes. So for the woodworking sanding dust, the uh, fan helped settle that out about one and a half times faster. For the smoke quite dramatically, and for the oil on a hot plate, uh, hardly noticeably, but at any rate, the fan never hurts the dust to settle and always seems to help to varying degrees. Beyond that, I can't really make many general conclusions based on the experiments because my results were all over the place, although always a nice exponential decay, so I have confidence in the integrity of my readings. But it seems what sort of airborne particulate I have makes a huge difference, whether it's from burning wood or oil on a hot plate, or shaking out the shop vac filter, or sanding. All these dusts seem to respond differently to different things. So there's no hard and fast rule about anything. The one thing though is it's very hard to get to high concentrations of the uh, 2.5 type micron particles using just woodworking means. And those are the particles that are potentially most damaging to health. So it would appear then that woodworking dust is probably a lot less harmful than smoke or other sources of particles. But again, it also probably depends greatly on what the particles are. So rock dust, for instance, is supposed to be quite harmful. I suspect woodworking dust, not so much, even for the same size particles, even for the same amount. Now I also wanted to talk about the Drio air purifier. That's before I got totally down the rabbit hole measuring dust settling, but it's not too late for that. For its size and noise level, the Drio did really well clearing out the air in my experiments. But would it be suitable as a workshop air cleaner? Not really. Because looking at the filter for this one that I've been using for a while, it's got quite a lot of stuff on it. Because the workshop dust is a lot of rather large particles that can clog up the filter. And this pleated filter from one of my other air cleaners I've blown out from time to time. The pleats are barely wide enough I can do this. But on this one, they are quite fine, plus there's a mesh in front. 
So maybe if I got rid of the mesh, I might be able to clean it up with an air compressor, but it's not ideal. Then looking at the filter on the Dyson, this one's got even finer pleats, which you know is good for a filter, but uh, makes it impossible to clean out if it's got coarse dust on it. Plus it's got some kind of activated carbon filter behind it, so I wouldn't even be able to blow it out from behind. But I like the design of the drill because the filter is round, the fan is round, so it's logical to just put them on top of each other and put that in a cylindrical enclosure. So uh, this sort of design is good, and I'm not saying that uh, this is necessarily the best one. I know it works well, and if I was buying another air purifier, if it wasn't this one, I'd probably buy one that is a cylindrical shape like this as well, because that just sort of suggests uh, form follows function, which I think is the right approach. That said, the uh, filter is actually not the full diameter of the enclosure, so this could be made with a bigger filter still. The fan is the full size, so that probably determined the size of this whole enclosure. And the bigger you make a fan, the better it is at moving air without making a whole lot of noise. The other thing is, I also like to use furnace filters in homemade dust collectors, but these pleats are already too fine for that, so I use uh, much coarser pleats that don't get clogged up with a lot of coarse dust. And I've got one in this dust collector, which is for this belt sander, and I haven't looked at that in a while, so let's pull it out and have a look. I quite deliberately oriented this so that the filter was facing down, so that if the dust caked up too thickly on this, it could potentially fall onto the bottom, which is the lid here. Although, looking at the uh, things here, there is quite a coating on that. And I always get comments about the futility of using a dust collector to clean out a dust collector, but running it all through the cyclone at once, very little of the dust ends up on the filters. Even though it's very fine dust, it almost entirely ends up in the bucket. Now, there's some dust I could maybe use for experiments. Ugh. <laughs> 